This is where I grew up, so it's a really special place to me, and I thought I'd take you guys on an adventure today. I'm gonna go for a dive. I'm gonna see if I can find some abalone and some sea urchin to cook something delicious with you guys today. I don't have a knife with me. It's actually in my brother's boat. I found a paint scraper in the garage, a metal ruler, and then I have a bread knife. So <laughs> let's see how we go. Red knife worked. Okay. Success. I managed to find some um, black lip abalone and also some sea urchin, and the bread knife came in super handy. Um, I managed to get them off with it, so I was stoked about that. And my ruler came in handy to size them up. So we've got three in size abalone and a bunch of sea urchin and I harvested some seawater which I am going to make a pizza dough with. So I'm going to show you guys how to make a wheat pizza. I'm going to do black lip abalone in a sea urchin butter and also I'm going to show you how to make one of my favorite desserts which is actually using apricots. So in Tasmania we're known for our stone fruit and I managed to find some delicious Moor Park apricots that I'm going to cook in the Gosney. One of my favorite things about Tasmanian summer is apricots. And as a kid, I used to live up by mum's apricot tree. Um, I would just eat my way through the tree over the summertime and I would tell anyone off if they tried to eat my apricots. So I'm gonna show you a recipe, but a big thing about what I do before I head out on a venture is to prep. So I always prep my bag, prep anything I can at home. Um, and what we're gonna be doing with our apricots is cooking them in the Gosney, but I'm gonna be serving them with a vanilla mascarpone cream. So this recipe is super simple. And we're just gonna dump in half a cup of mascarpone and I'm gonna pop in about a cup or three quarters of a cup of cream, a little bit of vanilla paste, um, about that, it's about a teaspoon, some caster sugar. So you're just gonna add all your ingredients in and you're gonna just whip them together. I'm just using a balloon whisk. So that's looking fantastic. And you also want to let this sit for probably a minimum of an hour because you want the sugar to dissolve into um, the cream, the mascarpone cream. So I've just popped that into my little kiln, kilner jar here and I'm gonna pop this in the fridge. We're gonna make a couple other things before I head out on my adventure. 
All right, I'm gonna show you guys how to make weed pizza, but the base of my pizza is actually using ocean water. Where you are, you may not have clean ocean, so I would recommend not using ocean water, but if you have access to beautiful clean ocean water, try it. I've got 450 grams of flour and I've got about, I don't know, a tablespoon of yeast in there, like active dry yeast. And then I have got some ocean water. So what you wanna do is what we call create a well. So I'm gonna create a well here. I've warmed my ocean water up ever so slightly because that's gonna help activate the um, dry yeast. Big thing about um, bread dough or like pizza dough or anything like that is about what we call the hydration ratio, which is the flour to um, water ratio. And typically making a pizza dough, you do want it to be quite well hydrated because that's what makes it like get that beautiful big puff to it. Um, and you can make this the night before. Like sometimes I'll make this and I'll pop it in my fridge if I know I'm getting up early and I'm going surfing with my buddies or I'm going camping or something and I'll make it, I'll just put it in like a little snap lock bag um, and then I'll take it out on my adventure. And then by the time we go to eat dinner, I have really beautifully proved um, pizza dough. All right, so I'm really happy with how my bread dough is looking. It's got a nice sort of hydration to it. So it's sort of still sticking to my hands, which is what you want. So I sometimes, if I'm just trying to bring it back together, to take with me. I'll just flour my hands lightly, tuck it under by spinning it around. And then I'm gonna pop it in my little snap lock bag here, ready to take on my adventure. And that's saltwater pizza dough. We are gonna make the sea urchin butter abalone. So I've prepared my abalone by removing it out of his shell. And I'm gonna keep the shell because that's what I'm actually gonna serve it in and use as my plate. Um, and I have cleaned it up, tenderized it, and I'm gonna like cut it really nice and thin. I've got some beautiful new season Tasmanian garlic. And I'm gonna cut the abalone long strips I've heated the Gosney up to about 500 Fahrenheit. All right, so I've got my really hot cast iron frying pan here. And what I'm gonna do is throw in a good tablespoon of butter. I'm literally going to dump in there my abalone. Carefully pop it back in. What you're looking for with the abalone is actually that it starts to curl on its sides like this. That way you know it's done. With seafood, you kind of want to slightly undercook it because when you remove it out of the gosni, you're going to pop it into the shell and it actually is going to continue to cook a little bit. Um, and seafood's really delicate. It smells insane. Oh, banging. Soft, creamy, a little bit peppery, and you really got that like beautiful buttery flavor yum <laughs> we're going to slice up your seaweed i've got two varieties here i've got a sea lettuce and i've got a bit of kelp the kelp had fallen off from the base of the stalk so i was able to harvest it i'm just going to give it a nice like fine chop if you cannot harvest fresh seaweed you can also use like a nori roll like that you would get for making sushi with and you can hydrate it in some water that also works fantastic i've got um some mascarpone or creme fraiche and some um, confit garlic oil and a little bit of aged cloth cheddar this is our sea water pizza dough that i prepared earlier and as you can see it's risen really nicely i'm gonna get a little bit of flour i'm gonna pop this here it's quite a lot going on. That's okay. Upside down, a little bit of flour. I'm just gonna lightly dust my hands. What you wanna do is just stretch your dough out. 
stretch my dough out. Looks pretty good. And then I'm going to get a tiny bit of the mascarpone or creme fraiche. So I'm just going to put a bit of confit garlic oil on here. And then I am going to add a bit of my seaweed. Pop a little bit on, tiny bit of aged cheddar. And then I've got this little secret ingredient, which is a blue eye Tasmanian cheese, a blue cheese. And that's looking really good. We're going to launch it into my rock box like so my rock box is super hot i want to say it's on like maybe 800 right now yeah she's cooking this thing is firing away now what you're looking for when you're making your pizzas like this is you kind of want this like puff to happen around the outsides of your pizza and by saturating your um gosney rock box with heat it basically ensures that the whole pizza is going to cook evenly. And you can see already we've got this nice lovely little char there. It's going to pop it back in. It's lifted at the front. That's looking awesome. And I can see that cheese is melting perfectly. Now, you don't want to burn it. You just want a nice little crispy char on it. It smells phenomenal. Like I'm just getting these kind of lovely like wafts of the seaweed which is kind of like the salt water evaporating in the air and it's smelling fantastic um i mean it looks so dang delicious as you know i didn't actually season it with any salt and that's because i've got the salt water pizza dough um that has got all that beautiful flavor in it anyway so you don't want to over season it or it's just going to be like a little bit too salty and then in in a way the seaweed also offers that kind of like salty flavor as well mm. tastes bloody fantastic really must give this one a crack if you're going to go on an adventure make your pizza dough ahead of time harvest some seaweed make sure you check with um the local fisheries like what you can and can't do in terms of harvesting the seaweed obviously you want to also make sure that you're doing it where the water's nice and clean Dessert time, Tassie apricots. We're gonna cook some in the Gosney. Gonna use some white sugar, put it onto your cast iron pan. Now I've had this warming up in my Gosney rock box for about five minutes beforehand. And you're just gonna pop your apricots face down, pop this in here. We're gonna cook them in the Gosney till they start to like just basically soften and caramelized. And then I pull them out and flip them. I'm gonna take a little bit of time. I've also got a can of Willie Smith apple cider. You can use like a nice wine. You could use a liqueur with this. You could do like an amaretto, um, grab money. We're known for our apples down here and we're known for our cider. And I also was a little thirsty. So I thought throw a bit here, drink a little here. Cheers a little here. And we're going to finish this dessert off with the vanilla mascarpone that I made at home and put in my jar. I'm just going to pull this out. I'm trying to like stew my apricots almost. Frig, that smells good. Bit of a jiggle. Back in my gosney. gonna flip my apricots a bit more sugar sugar just wait taking the view it's like you're just cooking with your friend I feel like this Gosney's become a little bit of a friend you know might give him a name I know it's rock box but I like adding a tiny bit of lemon like citrus because it kind of just brightens up the dish a little. Someone's hungry. <laughs> Feed me, Sarah. You can't rush fruit. You know, it needs its time. This is what I mean. I really want them to have this kind of like little sunken down feeling to them. All the sugars and the juices, I've like basically stewed in the Gosney. 
you know it's done. I'm going to put a little bit of the vanilla mascarpone down. When I say a little, I mean a lot. I'm going to create a little bed for him. Find a nice apricot. Get a little bit of that juices on the bottom. And that's it. Vanilla mascarpone, caramelized apricots. I think I should try it. Mm. You know when they say, if you had a last meal to choose, what would it be? I live for them.